Hi, I'm Ron Toledo. I'm a Global uh, Chief Technology Officer for Capgemini's uh, Insights and Data Practice with uh, Artificial Intelligence as one of my main areas of interest at this point. Hi, I'm Marijn Marcus, Data Scientist at Capgemini, um, specializing in Artificial Intelligence. So you're guessing it by now, we are here to introduce to you one of the hottest topics right now, both in business and in IT, which is AI, Artificial Intelligence. Now, now, first of all, I think it's interesting to uh, to spend a minute or so on what AI actually might be. Would you have a um, you know Would you have a clear definition, man, of what uh, what AI actually is? That definition changed a lot over the course of history. Mm -hmm. In the in the fifties, Turing made a, made an algorithm that could play chess just by hand uh, calculating um, input current state of the board output mm -hmm. uh, next move. And people said, if we can make a, a, a robot, an AI that can play chess and beat world champions, that would be really intelligent. That's exactly what we did when Deep Blue in the 90s beat uh, world champion Kasparov. And the first thing we did was say, well, but it's not really intelligent. Meaning the definition of AI is um, a function of the times that we live in. Right. That's really the, the best definition I can give you. Exactly. I do think there's a few breakthroughs that we've seen in the past two years, particularly in the areas, arguably, of deep learning and neural networks, in which we move away a little bit of rule-based and algorithm-based ways of uh, ingesting data and, and learning from it and doing something with it. But, but I, I do think uh, that we can conclude that, that there's a very wide definition of what AI actually is. And, and we see examples like the use of machine learning, and we relate it to uh, artificial intelligence. We see uh, predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. which you could argue about whether that is really AI or not, a little bit based maybe on the technologies underneath. A lot of people uh, tend to see uh, conversational systems like chatbots as examples of uh, artificial intelligence and even, um, even um, you know, the robotic process automation in which we actually automate human tasks by, by observing and scripting their, their interaction with screens uh, is, is by some you know, uh, defined as artificial intelligence. Which is another interesting part of what defines artificial intelligence in that the perception of the user plays a huge part here. If you order coffee and the next time the coffee machine uh, uh, offers you uh, the same stuff, you would conclude, man, that's intelligent, even though it's just hard-coded to give you the same response as last time. Exactly. Um, Chatbots, similarly, um, all the backend integration is usually manual. Most of the sire models, no, not sire, most of the um, sequence to sequence models used nowadays are not all that intelligent, but to the user, it seems really smart. So that's, that's maybe a nice definition to, in, in the perception. So in the eyes of the, you know, the one that looks at AI and it appears to be intelligent, we could call that artificial intelligence, right? Because but in five years time, once we get used to the coffee machine, always knowing I want decaf. It's no longer intelligent behavior to us. Exactly. It's just a given, right? Is there a reason you think why, why AI is so popular right now? I already mentioned deep learning and neural networks as a breakthrough, but we've seen multiple so-called AI winters. Any reason why, we, why uh, it is successful now and it, and it wasn't that successful given the concept of AI winters in the past? Well, in the 60s we had the first AI winter when um, mathematics uh, progressed real fast but we encountered a hardware limit on how much uh, we could actually calculate which led to a market crash. In the 80s, um, after XCOM uh, saved 10 million dollars a year um, by automating a, a hardware recommendation system Mm -hmm. which took them two years to build and was outdated after half a year, um, we had a second market crash because, because, uh, because there was too much manual work involved in building giant rule-based systems. Now, both hardware limits and uh, manual work limits are bypassed nowadays with current technology. Um, a possible third AI winter could be the fact that we have a lot of legacy systems nowadays, a lot of organizations who want to invest in artificial intelligence, but their backend and their data quality are not, are not supporting enough of um, adapting right. these new technologies. Right. And, and that's definitely, I think, a plea to many uh, companies that are fascinated by becoming an AI-driven company is, well, you need to get your act together in, in terms of the data. Uh, because because AI typically needs to learn from historical and, and, and real-time data, right, in order to be 
acting intelligence. Mm -hmm. so, so, so to have your act together as a company in terms of your, your data integration, your data governance, the quality of your data, the availability of it, mm -hmm. I think is, uh, is pretty um, crucial whether you want to apply AI or not, right? It's, uh, it's definitely a requirement. We course. have amazing techniques nowadays, but mm. if, the, if the data you have does not, uh, is not of enough quality or quantity to, to support such a technique, to quote a good colleague of mine, your model is only going to be as good as the data used to train it. Well, exactly. It's a matter of good models, and, uh, but even more so probably a matter of uh, good data that you use for it. Um, now, we could, we could discuss a lot about the uh, definitions of AI and where it comes from and, and how it succeeds or not. But maybe we should dive a little bit in some, some you know, use cases just to get a flavor of, of what's actually happening right now with AI. Um, Let's, let's go through a few. Um, you first. Um, last year we automated the reading of uh, different documents uh, using natural language processing and sire model machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning input, you put in 55 documents and output, these five documents have issues. Meaning you don't have to read the other 50 anymore. Right. We called that use case AI assisted auditing. But the important part is that we are not automating the entirety of, of the work, but just the dull parts, the control F parts the mind-numbing parts, and that's why AI in this case assists the user. Right. That's a good example, right? Uh, so natural language understanding is clearly a very interesting mm -hmm. area. I like image recognition. I think uh, there, there's a lot of powerful APIs available nowadays. You, you know, you don't even need to understand really AI in order to call a, an API that helps you to recognize images. Uh, we've been working, for example, on, on pothole detections on, on roads, yeah. right, based on uh, large numbers of, uh, of pictures of these roads and automatically detect damage on these roads. On these roads. We see this, uh, the same in insurance, right, in, in which we want to be able to, to look at pictures of, of damage and be able to assess the nature of damage and, and possible fraud in it. At right? a speed and scale beyond any human ability. Absol absolutely, absolutely. And, and of course, there are many uses of AI within our own company as well, right? I, I know you're involved yourself in, uh, in making our knowledge available to our uh, professionals. Right now, we're, uh, we're building a chatbot that indexes a lot of our backend systems to allow you to query and look through, man, I need a tool for this, I need a use case for that. Yeah, exactly. Which and we're currently working on. And, and it, combi it combines two aspects of AI, right? Because there's a conversational element to it, which you could call uh, typical cognitive capabilities. Mm -hmm. So the system understands you, natural language can, can have a conversation with you, understands your intent, right? And, uh, which is all AI driven. And then, and then you get access to, to this vast knowledge base of structured and mostly unstructured information. And you're able to find your way AI assistant much quicker than, than you ever were able to do before, right? Which is the biggest application of AI for data scientists to turn structured, uh, unstructured data into structured data. Yeah. Which brings us to the easiest definition I can give for a data scientist, which is a person that creates value from data. So now we know what you do as a data scientist. You create value from sort data. Sort of, kind of. Sort of, yeah, right. So we'll have many more use cases later on in this series, but uh, let's, let's discuss a little bit more about strategy. Uh, there's a lot of companies nowadays that come back to us and ask us, uh, what's, a, um, what, what's it like to be an AI-first company? And um, I've, I've, I've often uh, simply used a few uh, companies uh, as examples on, on how to do that. I think Amazon, in the way that it uh, recommends uh, new products to its, to its uh, customers, the way it has its drones and its autonomous warehouses uh, equipped with AI, uh, the way it has, of course, the Amazon Alexa system to have a conversational front end all driven by AI, and even now is checkout less store, which is completely driven by AI in order to get a completely seamless shopping experience without the need to, to check out uh, or any you know, cashier or whatever involved are all examples of a company that simply infuses AI in everything uh, that it's doing. Right? Which requires giant back-end investments to get your, uh, your data uh, exactly. architecture up to, up to snuff. But once you have attained that, then it becomes a Lego box for us data scientists to build castles with. Exactly, and, and, and that is the very nature of becoming AI first, is, is to infuse that, and, and, and that, that broad capability, that platform almost, and then use it to, to, to literally infuse every aspect of your business with, uh, with AI. So uh, we are um, nearing the end of our uh, little introduction uh, discussion. Um, what would it take uh, to, to actually successfully implement AI? Would you have some recommendations? What are we doing in practice to actually get organizations to, uh, to, to get hands-on with, with AI? 
Well, in the long term, like I mentioned, uh, investment in proper data structure is mm -hmm. important. But in the short term, discovering, um, trying, uh, experimenting, put put uh, put data scientists in a in a corner with uh, with a lot of data and please some domain knowledge as well, um, and try try applying new techniques to current issues to to find new solutions to existing problems, thereby proving the value of AI to your company, which then allows you to make that investment. Uh, exactly, in the long term. And, and I think you mentioned these two sides of it, right? It's, it's on one hand a, a matter of discovering. So you want to have your business people involved as well mm -hmm. and, and understand how it affects your strategy. So, so, you know, distill the right use cases for AI on one hand. So have a strategic perspective on it. And on the other hand, get very hands on with the technologies. And, and I'm sure uh, in the remainder of this series, we'll come back a little bit to the typical oh, yeah. technologies and the platforms that, that you should get used to as well, which mm -hmm. are so typical to this uh, wave of AI. So that concludes a little bit our little uh, introduction uh, for this uh, entire AI series. There's much more where this comes from. So we're looking forward to see you in, uh, in uh, the next episodes of our uh, AI series. There's much more to discover. And uh, so stay tuned for more. Thank you very much. Thank you.